Hello, this is Ron Clark, bringing you Lesson 7 in the magic of yod heh Adonai. I wish to introduce you to an advanced usage of the magic of yod heh Adonai that I call setting the tone of the temporal moment. By this technique one creates conditions within the material realm that are in harmony with the realization of a specific desire. For example, once a week I drive thirty-five miles each direction along both freeway and narrow back roads to volunteer a few hours at a food bank. Each week before departing I use this setting the tone technique to assure that I will have a safe journey to and fro, that my time at the food bank will be pleasant, and that I will succeed in putting smiles on several faces while I'm there. As a consequence, I have never had an accident on either freeway or on the narrow back roads. My time at the food bank is always pleasant, and I invariably succeed in making folks smile. Another example was one day I was having difficulties with my computer CD burner, and I had a fair-sized order of CDs that needed burning. So I used this technique to set the tone of smooth operating. It was like making a groove in a blank record, after which it was no problem to deposit myself and my CD burner into that groove. As a consequence, I was able to finish the needed CD burning without further difficulty. As a final example, I used this technique right before sitting down to write this new lesson. With it, I set the tone for a successful completion of my task, for clarity of mind, and for a lack of interruptions. These, of course, are just three rather mundane examples of what is possible to accomplish with this technique. Nonetheless, it is best to begin with something simple and practical when learning the technique. So I will be using my final example as a template for my explanation of the technique. First, I will give a detailed description of the technique within the context of my template, and then I will guide you through the technique step by step as you apply it to a matter of your own choosing. It took me a matter of just a few seconds to set the tone for this writing session, but I dare say it will take me far longer to describe in detail what occurred during those few seconds. This is just as well since when you're first learning this technique, it's essential that you take your time and move very slowly through the visualizations I will be describing. But before I go any further, I must say something about visualization. For the trained magician, there's but a hair's breadth of difference between visualizing something and perceiving it as an accomplished fact. The reason for this is the strength of the trained mental will. When a thing is visualized with a strong mental will, a strong presence is created within the mental realm itself. Within the mental realm, the law of like attracts like holds sway. So when you insert a strong visualization into the mental realm, the realization of that visualization is immediately drawn to it, and the visualization becomes a fact of reality instead of just an imagination. Of course, it takes time for this mental template to sink through the layers of density and become a physical reality, but on the mental plane, the transition from imagination to factual reality is instantaneous. This mental plane law of like attracts like is important. It's the key to how one travels around the infinite mental plane. It's the root of many forms of magic, and it's the basis upon which several of the exercises of initiation into hermetics were constructed. For example, the step three work with the elements is based upon this law. The student begins by creating a multi-sense imagination that the element surrounds them and stretches infinitely in every direction. This creates a very strong presence within the mental realm to which is attracted the mental reality of the imagined element. In this way, the student connects with the real element through the application of their own imagination. And because this is a multi-sense imagination, it will sink immediately into an astral density and the student will connect with the astral element as well. But it is only because of the mental formation and consequent mental connection that the astral connection results. In other words, without the mental connection, no astral connection would ensue. In Lesson 7, I will instruct you to visualize certain things. 
but really these need to become more than mere imagination and grow into actual perception of factual reality. However, your imagination will become stronger and stronger through repeated practice and you will achieve that transition from imagination to perception of factual reality. So, on to my description. I begin by uttering the Ani. Simultaneously, I am placing my awareness in Kether. In Kether, I look down upon the whole of reality, the eternal and the temporal. My perspective is as if from above, and implies a certain detachment, yet I am completely connected with all that I see. It and I are one, yet I have focused my awareness above it, so that I can look down upon it. The primary thing that catches my Kethric eye is a thin white thread that stretches from my Kethric self all the way down to my little Ron self, who just uttered the word Ani. This thread passes through Chokma, and thereby highlights Chokma to my vision. It passes also through the greater self Soantha, of which the small Ron self is an aspect and thereby highlights Bina to my vision. Furthermore, it passes through the individual Ron self, and thereby hi highlights Tiferet to my vision. And at its end, the thread lies rooted in the small Ron self, who first uttered the Ani. I focus my Kethric consciousness upon this single white thread, and as I speak the Yod, through my small Ron self, I follow that descending thread and lower my Kethric self into Hokma, the place of choice. I fill Hokma with my Kethric awareness and choose to follow the thread further. As I utter the first He through my small Ron self, I follow the thread and lower my Kether Hokma self into Bina and the Soantha greater self. I fill Soantha with my Kether Chokma awareness, and sense my eternal surroundings. Then with my Kether Chokma Bina awareness, I look down upon my individual Ron self within the temporal realm. As I utter the Vav through my small Ron self, I follow the thread and lower my Kether Chokma Bina self into Tiferet and the individual Ron self. I fill the individual Ron self with my Kether Chokma Bina awareness and sense my temporal surroundings. Then with my Kether Chokma Bina Tiferet awareness, I look down upon my small Ron self within the finite temporal moment. As I utter the final He through my small Ron self, I follow the thread and lower my Kether Chokma Bina Tiferet self into Malkuth and the small Ron self. I fill Ron with my Kether Chokma Bina Tefereth awareness and sense my time-space surroundings. Then with my unified Kether Chokma Bina Tefereth Malkuth awareness I speak the Adonai and the rainbow-hued light erupts around me. This light exists as a consequence of the unification of these five layers of my awareness within this temporal moment. Then I inhale this cloud of light into the material body of my small Ron self by pulling it inward in a clockwise spiral motion like water going down the drain of a sink. If you have trouble visualizing this clockwise spiral motion, then I suggest that you plug a sink and fill it with water. Then unplug the sink, and as the water drains, move your hand clockwise through the water and create a strong clockwise current. This is how the indraw feels. It pulls in from the edges towards center in a right to left arc. The expulsion of the light outward uses this same clockwise motion, in which case the light fans out from center. So, having inhaled the cloud of light into myself, through my exhale, I speak the Rabono Shel Olam, 
with my kether hokma bina tiferet malkuf awareness and send this light outward unto eternity i see the rainbow hued light spread immediately throughout the temporal universe and i follow its passage inward and feel it as it strikes in succession my tiferet bina hokma and Ketheric selves. This raises my Kether Hokma Bina Tiferet Malkuth awareness up to Kether, and I am united in Kether in the same way I am united in Malkuth. With the inhalation of my material body within the finite temporal moment, my Kether Hokma Bina Tiferet Malkuth awareness is drawn back down into Malkuth. And as I speak the Amen with my unified consciousness and will, the cloud of light re-solidifies around my material body. As I inhale, I draw the cloud of light again into my material body in a clockwise spiral motion. As I exhale, I speak the Amen again with my fully unified awareness and send the light outwards into the fabric of time again with a clockwise spiral motion. I should explain that sending the light into the fabric of time is different than sending the light out to the edges of the infinite universe. Here I am sending it outward from the present finite moment of rigid time-space into the ocean of possible futures that surround this finite present moment. This feels very different than sending the light out into just the present moment alone. When sending it into the fabric of time, there is a sense of boundlessness. Whereas when sending it into the present moment alone, there is a contrasting sense of rigidity and physicality, as if you're passing through matter itself. Here, however, you're not passing through matter. Instead, you're passing through the as-yet-unwoven fabric of time. Since the desire I bring to the use of this magic today is that I might find the right words in writing this lesson, I send that mental desire out with the light on its journey into the fabric of time. My mental impress acts as a magnet that draws what I seek to me, and draws me to what I seek. The cloud expands until its edges reach the possible future temporal moment in which there is a realization of my desire. At that point, the spreading light ceases to expand. I have made contact with the potential future I sought, and there is no reason to probe further. With an inhale of breath, I draw the light back into my material body again, using a clockwise spiral motion. As the light returns to me, I feel that it has bound my goal and I together. It has connected us and forms a bridge between us. That bridge is built out of my desire to be successful in the creation of Lesson 7. What I have done here is to anchor the light upon a specific possible future. This enables me to locate that specific moment again with the next sending out of light and provides me with a target I need to harmonize my present moment with. In other words, I will now begin the process of truly setting the proper tone for the moments that ensue between this present one and the possible future that I've anchored the light to. By using the Adonai light to fill that temporal gap between my present moment and that specific possible future moment, I have created a vibrational continuum between the energetic frequencies of these two different moments in time-space. I am at one point in the spectrum of rainbow-hued light, and the future moment is at another point in that spectrum. And before me lies the unbroken continuum of color which blends my point in the spectrum with that of the future moment. So, having drawn the light back into my material body and into the present moment, I exhale and speak the Amen again with my fully unified awareness, sending the light outwards into the fabric of time once more. It expands with a clockwise spiral motion until it reaches my target moment once again. As it expands, the continuum between moments becomes clearer 
and more solid, and these two moments are brought into closer harmony. This also strengthens my grasp upon that future moment, which increases its likelihood a thousandfold. With the inhale, I draw the light back again into my material form and into the present moment. This alters the present moment and brings it into closer harmony with the likely future moment. For a third and final time, I again speak the Amen with my fully unified awareness and send the light out on its journey to my target moment. As the light expands, the continuum between moments is enlivened and brought still closer to the realm of probability and ultimate actualization. When it touches the target moment, the target is moved firmly into the realm of probability. So much so, in fact, that it is now not likely that it would not occur. With the final inhalation, I draw the light back into my material body and draw the vibration of my target moment back with me into the present moment. As the light returns, the continuum becomes absolutely solid and there is no doubt that this target moment containing success will manifest. I close with a moment of thankfulness and return to my relatively mundane awareness. When I sat down to write several minutes later, I completely surrounded myself and my target moment with white light and thereby set myself on the path which invariably leads to that future moment. This final step of encircling oneself and one's target with white light is what sets you upon the path to your goal, no matter how long a time has lapsed between your work of setting the tone and your actually setting foot on the path, circling both ends of the continuum with white light will bring you immediately into harmony with the path. The work of setting the tone carves a metaphorical groove and circling yourself and your target with white light puts you in that groove which leads to only one place your target. For example, I will not finish writing Lesson 7 in one sitting. I will have to go water my garden soon, which means that I will have to later reclaim my position in this groove. It will take several days, possibly, to complete this task of writing, recording, and then posting it all on my website, so I will need to jump in and out of that groove, so to speak, several times before I have met face to face with my target moment. All I have to do to get myself back into the groove is to surround myself and my target with white light. As I hinted at the beginning, this setting the tone technique has countless applications and an equal number of possible variations. One internal variation that I'd like to mention has to do with the initial phase of anchoring. Aside from your target moment, you can also anchor the light to interim moments that exist within the continuum of separation between your present moment and your ultimate target. This is especially beneficial for longer range goals. For example, with the working I just described, I could have also anchored onto the moment that I finish writing Lesson 7 and the moment I finish recording Lesson 7 in addition to my target moment of total completion. Having these three anchors instead of just one makes a journey to a final destination somehow easier to manage. It's like when taking a long road trip. If one sees a few familiar landmarks along the way, the long journey then splits itself into shorter parts. This provides clear markers that help define one's progress. Multiple anchors are, as I said, most practical for longer term goals, so I have not felt the need for them here in this instance. Anchoring is also an important factor when you wish to adapt this technique for healing another person or for bestowing the blessing of yod heh vav -Heh adonai upon another person. Both of these adaptations will be covered in future lessons. Well, I think I've completely exhausted my ability to describe the technique, so let's move on to the practice. Before we begin, you must decide upon the desire you wish to apply this technique to. For your first practice, it should be something fairly simple and short-term. If you haven't already settled upon a choice, then put this recording on pause and decide now. Since we will be going so slowly through the utterance of the canticle, please feel free to take any empty breaths that you might need. 
Do not hold your breath in or out in any event. Begin by stilling your mind and body and focusing your awareness within the present moment of time and space. When you speak the Ani, which begins the canticle, you want to raise your awareness up to your kether in synchrony with the rising tone of the word, Ani, so that by the time you are uttering the final yod of Ani, you are firmly rooted in your ketheric awareness. So, let's begin. Ani Your awareness is now focused in Kether. The entire creation is spread out below your center of awareness. You see below you the layers of eternity and temporality. Weaving its way up to you, you see a thin white thread. It is rooted in your material form and leads all the way up to your Catholic awareness. It exists because you have spoken the Ani. You see that it passes through Tiferet and illumines your own individual self. It passes through Bina and illumines the greater self of which you are a part. And it passes through Chokmah, illuminating that sphere as well. When these images are clear to your perception, you are ready to speak the yod heh vav -Heh and follow that thread down to your material form. As you speak the Yod, begin your descent and with your Kethric awareness, follow the white thread into Hakma. Catholic awareness is now centered in Chokmah. This region appears as a soft gray light and the bright white thread passing through the center of it. Fill your Chokmah with your Catholic awareness and then with your combined Catholic and Chokmah awareness gaze over at Bina and see the bright white thread which spans this distance. When these images are clear to your perception, you are ready to speak the first He and follow that thread over to your greater self. As you speak the He, begin your descent and with your combined Kether Hokma awareness Follow the white thread into Bina. Hey. Your Kether Hokma awareness is now centered in Bina. Fill your greater self with your Kether Hokma awareness. And then with your combined Kether, Chokmah, and Bina awareness, look around you. Above you, you see the white brilliance of Kether. And below you, you see the relative darkness of the temporal realm. Surrounding you within the eternal realm, you perceive an infinite number of other greater selves. Now take note of the bright white thread that leads from the heart of your greater self down into the temporal realm, highlighting your individual self residing in Tiferet.
when these images are clear to your perception, you are ready to speak the Vav and follow that thread down to your individual self. As you speak the Vav, begin your descent, and with your combined Kether Hokma Bina awareness, follow the white thread into Tiferet. Va. Your Kether Hokma Bina awareness is now centered in Tifereth. Fill your individual self with your Kether Hokma Bina awareness. And then, with your combined Kether, Hokma, Bina, and Tifereth awareness, look around you. Above, you see the violet blackness of Bina. And below you, you see the relative darkness of the material realm. Surrounding you is the entire temporal realm, and you perceive an infinite number of other individual selves. Now take note of the bright white thread that leads from your heart of your individual self down into the material realm and the finite moment highlighting your material self residing in Malkuth. When these images are clear to your perception you are ready to speak the final he, and follow that thread down to your material self. As you speak the he, begin your descent, and with your combined Kether, Chokma, Bina, Tifereth awareness, follow the white thread into Malkuth. He. Kether, Chokma, Bina, Tiferet awareness is now centered in Malkuth. Fill your material self with your Kether, Chokma, Bina, Tiferet awareness by becoming aware of each of these levels of your awareness simultaneously. Since your Kether, Chokma, Bina, Tiferet, and Malkuth all at once, as a single, cohesive, multi-layered consciousness. When this unified state of awareness, which combines the eternal and temporal realms, occurs within the finite moment of time-space, the rainbow-hued light of Adonai erupts spontaneously, with your united consciousness, you speak the Adonai in celebration and affirmation of this eruption of light. Adonai The rainbow-hued cloud of Adonai light now spins clockwise around your material body which houses your unified consciousness. As you inhale in preparation to speak the Rabono Shalolam with your unified consciousness, draw this cloud of Adonai light into the center of your material body. As you then speak the Rabono Shalolam, send the light you have brought into your core outward to the edges of the infinite universe as usual and also send it inward to Tifereth, Bina, Hakma, and Kether. Ribbon Shel Olam Follow the light with your unified consciousness all the way out to the metaphorical edges of the universe, and all the way in to Kether, 
brushing upon everything that exists in between. And with an inhale, draw this transfigured Adonai light back into your material body and into the finite moment of time-space wherein is housed your unified consciousness. Again, spread your awareness to all the layers of your multi-layered consciousness simultaneously. And as you speak the Amen, see that the transfigured Adonai light surrounds your material body, spinning clockwise. Amen. With the Adonai light spinning around you, Spend a few moments focused upon your single desired outcome. With your inhale in preparation to speak the next Amen, you must draw the Adonai light back into the core of your material body. At the same time, transfer your strongly formed desire into the Adonai light. Impress it very strongly upon the light as you draw it into your body. And then as you speak the Amen itself, you must send this light which carries the impress of your desire outward into the as yet unwoven fabric of time. Amen. With your unified consciousness ride the expanding wave of outflowing light as it penetrates the darkness of infinite possibilities. You are looking for the one possible future moment in which your desire is realized. Just flow outward with the wave of light, keeping your mind focused upon your desired outcome, and this moment in future time will find you. You will know when you have encountered it by the fact that it stops the expansion of the light outward. For a brief moment, let your unified consciousness rest in that future moment. And now, with an inhale, draw the light back to your material body and into the finite present moment, as usual giving it a clockwise spiral motion. Spend a few moments focusing upon the connection that now exists between this present moment and that future moment. You've snared it in your web of Adonai light, and have plucked it from the realm of infinite, undifferentiated possibilities, and transformed it into a specific possibility. With your inhale in preparation to speak the next Amen, you must again draw the Adonai light into your core and reaffirm its impregnation with your desired outcome. With the subsequent speaking of the Amen, you again send the light out into the fabric of time, but this time you are aiming for a known goal, your future moment. Amen. As before, with your unified consciousness, ride the expanding wave of light as it very quickly makes its way to the now familiar future moment that holds the realization of your desire. For a brief moment, 
Let your unified consciousness rest in that future moment. And now with the inhale, draw the light back into your material body and back into the finite present moment, as usual giving it a clockwise spiral motion. This time, however, you must draw that future moment back with you. Bring its definable uniqueness back into the definable uniqueness of the finite present moment. Spend a few moments focusing upon how much stronger the connection between this present moment and that future moment has become. See how this present moment has been changed by your having made this connection. You have brought that possible future closer and it's now a likelihood instead of a mere possibility. With your inhale, in preparation to speak the final Amen, you must again draw the Adonai light into your core and reaffirm its impregnation with your desired outcome. With the subsequent speaking of the Amen, you again send the light out into the fabric of time, but this time it's as if you're carving a clear pathway between you and your future moment. As before, with your unified consciousness, ride the expanding wave of light as it very quickly makes its way to the now familiar future moment that holds the realization of your desire. As you progress outward, carve a very distinct path that connects your present moment with your future moment. For a brief moment, let your unified consciousness rest in that future moment. And now with an inhale, draw the light back into your material body and back into the finite present moment, as usual, giving it a clockwise spiral motion. Again, you must bring the definable uniqueness of that future moment back into the definable uniqueness of the finite present moment. As you travel back to the present moment with the light, follow the path you laid down during the expansion and make this pathway more distinct. Spend a few moments focusing upon how strong, clear, and solid the connection between this present moment and that future moment has become. See how both this present moment and that future moment have been changed by your having made this strong a connection. You have brought that future likelihood still closer and it's now an inevitability instead of a likelihood. In this present moment, you are positioned squarely on the path that leads to this inevitable moment in which your desire has been realized. With your unified awareness, focus in this present moment, and once again spread your unified awareness throughout the multiple layers of your consciousness simultaneously. See the cloud of rainbow-hued light that surrounds you. Say a brief prayer of thanks for this blessing. And then utter a final Amen. Release your visualizations and return firmly to your mundane awareness. Open your eyes if they were closed and move your body around a bit. Get the blood flowing. Once you have fully returned to your normal state of awareness, 
mentally surround yourself with white light and then mentally surround your future moment with the same white light. This ends the practice of setting the tone of the temporal moment and concludes Lesson 7 in the magic of yod heh vav -He adonai I wish you many wonderful returns as you explore the infinite possibilities of this technique. My best to you. Blessed be.